Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Fortnite Battle Royale is slowly taking over the world, but tips from a few months ago are no longer viable or the meta has changed enough for new tactics you should be aware of. So I've asked as many professional Battle Royale players as I can think of to give you 35 pro tips. And by asked, I mean I've stalked them and spammed their chat until they replied. These 35 tips should be good for anyone from beginner to intermediate, and hopefully you guys who are already Battle Royale gods may find one or two things you didn't already know. Oh, and a quick favour if I may, which skin do you use the most? It's Rex, right? No? Just me? Okay, let's do this. If you find yourself stuck in the storm, I'm already sure that you use the launch pad wherever possible to escape, but also keep in mind those pulse grenades to push yourself quickly towards the safe zone. In some cases, it's actually more beneficial to grab the pulse nades over healing items, so don't ignore them, they could save your life. Most people have noticed that the altitude your parachute pops at is set to a certain distance above the ground or structures. What a great deal of people are missing though is that the parachute auto deploys at its lowest altitude if you are away from the island. So places like Greasy Grove can be reached quicker by first jumping away from the island and sweeping back in after the umbrella pops. This should allow you to land first and wreck bitches, if you can find a weapon of course. Not everyone wants to fight every single person they see, so if you're a covert player, attempt to enter the safe zones by the smallest side. This limits the number of combatants you'll face. The theory is simple, we are all attracted to those areas of interest, the ones that are named on the map. Get the edge by thinking tactically and entering the safe zone by the area of least resistance. Whether you're a warmonger or a stealth player, think about running towards gunfire in the distance. If you time it right, you can sneak up on an entire squad and completely obliterate a team which has just survived a long tough battle. It's also a great idea to get used to the unique sounds of each weapon. If you are hankering for a scar, listen for those shots and take the weapon by force. Let's move on to building. Building bases remains an integral part of the later game combat. It's a great recommendation to throw a trap at the top of your base to warn off any would-be base rushers. But we can take this a step further by placing traps at the foot of our base and catch those snooping little buggers who attempt to hide there. By doing this, you also may find yourself being forced to jump out of your structure and running away may actually net you another kill. Oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm just trying to get a trap kill. Yeah, you fell for it, boy -o. And one more way to use traps on your bases is by putting them inside. A few ways to do this, edit the top of your structure and watch your foes fall to their death, or make a door on the bottom and hide traps behind it. There's so many ways to use traps to both deter and outright murder other players. <laughs> Why did you fall for that? Most people dude? use Why? brick and metal for those final bases. This makes complete sense as they are the stronger materials, but many people miss how weak they are during the first few seconds of the build. Wood, on the other hand, has immediate integrity and can take the brunt of a shotgun blast and still stay intact. Whereas metal, the supposed strongest structure, is smashed to pieces immediately. Of course, metal is the strongest material for final towers, but always keep in mind how long they take to construct. Trees are the biggest commodity for materials in Fortnite, but the sight of them falling can give away your location. With big trees, try to keep the last 50 health intact and move to the next one. It's damn hard to resist, I know, but no one wants to be ambushed with their chopper out. I'm so sorry. Similarly, keep your eye on the horizon line and watch for falling trees and structures to get one up on the opposition. Another thing to consider with materials in general is what items give you the most resources or the quickest resources. Pallets, rock formations, huge pine trees and the beast trees at Moisty are great too. Get out your axe and just smack a few different things as you walk past. You may find something which yields more materials than you expected. There's a small glitch that can be used when gathering materials, axe switching or axe cancelling if you prefer. It works best on the PC, but with practice it's pretty good on console too. To do it, begin to mine like usual, but after your first swing hits, switch to your inventory items and immediately switch back again and start the process all over. Your character will definitely look like they're having a seizure, but with practice you can obliterate anything using axe cancelling. Let's look at our building options during fights. When climbing high, it's a good idea to put a ramp over your head to protect you from headshots from a higher distance. 
This is also the case with roofs, which can be placed above your head if the opposition has the high ground. You'd be surprised how many players jump down and give away that high ground once they feel they can't get free shots. Depending on the material you choose to build with, you can peek through the slats in the structure and get the drop on your enemy. Fortnite is very frustrating in that sense. Some gaps you can shoot through, some you cannot. In here, you are completely safe, so peek away. A quick reminder about edit mode. Edit your structures, in particular the walls, and remove all the segments in front of you. You'll now be able to see through to the other side, and it acts like a one-way mirror. Speaking of editing tiles, in sniper battles, most people are looking for someone to peek their head out of the top. Mix it up a little by quickly editing in a window and surprising those motherfuckers. Another good tactic is to hit a wall a few times to see through the top layer. The downside is the integrity of the wall is reduced, but you can then see through and not have to put your head above the parapet. By hitting their base a few times too, you can also see when they are healing and plan the perfect time to strike. If you find yourself under a great deal of pressure and you're building walls like there's no tomorrow, keep moving your character around. The occasional bullet will get through, so don't stay in one place too long. When landing in a building at the start of a game, you may have someone downstairs. A cool tip I saw over on Twitch involves stone covers. Stone offers limited visibility and builds quite fast compared to metal. When in the upstairs of a house, place down a floor over the stairs. Now, stand and be ready to kill your foe by editing out the tiles. Once they switch to their pickaxe, edit down and show them no remorse. Be aware though, not everyone falls for it, so be ready. How many times have you built a sky bridge and had it shot from beneath you? If you're running with a squad, try to attach the ramp or bridge to other structures like cliff edges. By doing this, if someone shoots out one of the panels, you and your squad won't fall to their death. Connecting structures to solid objects acts like a point of contact, keeping gravity at bay. When building structures, remember that you'll take fall damage jumping from a height above three and a half tiles. That's why the majority of towers you see are all three walls high. If you do fall from a considerable height, try to spam the ramp tile in the hopes of negating any fall damage. As an extension to this, if you're trying to make an impossible jump, use the roof tile to bridge the gap. I get into Salty Springs the exact same way every time, leaping from the cliff edge and placing down a tile to stop my impending death. Onto guns and silenced weapons in particular. These are so underutilized. If you don't want to murder people with them, use them for checking bushes or knocking down trees and walls without giving away your position. In ranged fights, use a sniper or other long range weapon to hugely weaken your enemy. Whether you hit or miss, immediately switch to your rifle and finish the fight. Too many of us, me included, have the urge to keep looking down our bolt sniper sights and admiring our shots. But by switching to another weapon immediately, you could end the fight much quicker. This should be an obvious one, but I've neglected it for so long, but you really should pop a ramp when fighting. The additional cover and height will always give you the edge in battle. Oh, did you know that sniper rifles can snipe through some cracks in structures? For example, those huts you see dotted around the world. Have you ever looted your kill and accidentally picked up too many bandages or grenades which take up two slots in your inventory? Switching to your axe while looting will stop you from getting too many materials, it will max out on its own. A few months ago I suggested hiding unwanted loot under pyramids. Well I have a new tactic for this season, placing a lovely structure and door around the loot. Here's the theory. Whilst resing a teammate or chug jugging, we all tend to build a mini fort around us to keep us safe, and then we create a door when we get out. Well, as these mini forts are so inviting to other players, place a trap behind the blind side of the door, and anyone who can't resist a little look-see will be obliterated. How often do you use the campfires? Did you know that the effects of those campfires can stack, so standing between two or more will see you heal super quickly? <laughs> We're gonna get sniped at any second now, our heads are going to be blown off. A few general tips to end on. Keep weapons in the same slot where possible. This will improve your muscle memory and your reaction times. Personally, my assault rifle goes in slot 1 with a short range weapon in 2 and a sniper in 5. This way I can stay with my preferred assault rifle and quickly switch to either sniper or shotgun in one single click on console. If you always keep the same weapon in the same slots, you'll never be forced to look at your loadout whilst fighting. Here's the biggest thing of all, and it seems a bit of a cop out but it needs to be said, check those patch notes. Things change so fast in Fortnite that the guns you love get slightly nerfed, 
all those guns that you hate suddenly become the new meta. All major updates will be covered here on PlayStation Grenade, so I'm happy to keep you up to date with everything Fortnite related. And to finish, here's a few tricks for console players. I made a more in-depth video about this, so here's a quick overview. By changing the pyramid structure to a ramp, you are able to minimize the number of clicks needed to build. Use the console aim assist to check for bush wookies. If the reticle stops for a millisecond over a bush, you know they're lurking there. Buttons can be reassigned on console too, so maybe you want to move jump to the thumbstick so you can battle better in shotgun fights, or you could even change the fire button from the triggers back to R1. Whew, we did it! 35 tips from those pros over on Twitch, so thank you to Dakota, CDN the Third, Ninja Myth, oh the list goes on forever. There are so many great Fortnite players out there. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, I may be a noob, but I know how to learn. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, I'll see you next time. Grenades! <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> oh my god, the